let me say something to you. Um, when I was in a uh, long time ago, in the 70s, I was in uh, taking some extension courses. You know, I was in the Air Force, but I was taking some extension courses. Mm -hmm. and, one, um, and one of the, uh, Dr. Roy Clouser was a philosophy, we took philosophy under him, took philosophy of religion, comparative religion, and, uh, and ethics. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, et was it logic? Whatever, I think it was logic, whatever it was. Uh -huh. um, but here's the thing, we we went through the whole thing, and then we asked, well, well Dr. Clouser, what, the way you talk, whatever, why do you even go to church? You know, he said, <laughs> oh, no, because it's a community thing. You know, right, <laughs> I want to yeah, hang out with my it, community, it whatever is. it is. <laughs> but, the, but one of the things I realized at that time, now, at that time is that, this is the revelation I had from the, from all that, mm -hmm. is that it's like, uh, if you want to call it God, creator, whatever you want to call it, universe, goes through everything in everybody. So in that way, that we all, we all sort of, a God, mm -hmm. like, uh, the, the, that's the sort of the oh, line. Yeah, yeah. And then what was interesting? That's scripture. Yeah. Well, uh, I, well okay. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Je but, but, Jesus quotes from Psalms, and he says, "Is it not written, Know that ye are gods, with a small g?" Okay, I got, I got that. But here's where I'm going with this. It's not just human beings. Because I, I was at some museum. Some they would say that you know, any place on the planet, there's a spider within six feet of you. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I'm thinking that, and so so when when I when I grew up Catholic, so we the catechism tell you that well, God sees you whenever you're blah 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 blah, and so you're going ah oh, yeah yeah yeah. But if that's true, that means even dust mites in the air, that means God is always present. So mm -hmm. God does always see you. I yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of interesting mm -hmm. to me, you know. Um, what kind of things do you? How, how do you get people to not understand religion, but understand this force, this? God force who don't want to understand a God force. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, do you have that kind of work? I mean, you know. Yeah, that's that's the reason why that is so hard because when you live in a in a society in a world that is secular that doesn't deal with with spirituality, when you when you live in a world where people are constantly being separated from one another geographically, color of skin, gender, all of that, then it's hard for them to understand that everything is connected. You know, people, one of the reasons why we have climate change is because people do not understand that we are not separate from nature. Mm. We are a part of nature. And so when we disrupt the ecosystem, when we when we disrupt biodiversity, that's when we have problems. When we have a shortage of honeybees, now you don't have bees to pollinate the flowers of what will become our fruits and vegetables. And if all the honeybees disappear on this planet, every human being would starve to death, you know? And so people who don't understand the interconnectedness of the world that we live on, it's hard for them to grasp the the rest of that. Okay, hold on a second. Let me. Put, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Let me let me put it this way. Let me be. I'm provocative, but let me put it this way. Yeah, that's regular for regular people. But it seems to me the people that are so called in control. They understand that quite well. Mm -hmm. In fact, isn't that one of the things that the English did? The whole divide and conquer thing. Yeah. If yeah. you do divide and conquer thing, and you expand it to like you div divide you from again from the snake. From you know, uh, 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 from the sunshine, if you will, but you know, from, from from the dust mites, whatever. If you div then then you're not being. I'm trying to figure out how to say. Are you not being godlike? I mean, what what does that do? You know, what's their modus operandi is divide and conquer. Is mm -hmm. our should we say no, no? We have to continue to unite. But how do I want to unite mm -hmm. with this person? This person is a bad person. You know, I mean, how does that? They 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 look at division as a way of them having power and control, and so if you look at if you look at theology and how it's preached and teed and taught, right? And you go to Genesis, the second chapter, the 28th verse, and you see, subdue the earth and have dominion over it, and everything that flies in the air, swims in the sea, crawls on the earth, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Mm -hmm. Well, people who look at that, people who are not spiritual look at that, and that says, that means I get to dominate yeah, everything. Yeah. I get I to do everything. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, that's exactly what. <laughs> and, but they don't look at it from the perspective of that this is, this is, I actually call it 
our Creator's first commandment, because it's before the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. And but when you look at it in the context that this is before the fall from grace, this is before the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. This is before the concept of sin mm -hmm. enters human beings in the world. So when you talk about submission, when you talk about um, domination, when you talk about any of these things, you're talking about them being done in a benevolent and loving way. So sometimes we have to dominate our children. Mm. You know, sometimes sometimes we, we, we have to subdue our feelings, right, mm -hmm. towards other people. But if we do it outside of a, a concept of loving and caring, and helping to keep the whole body, that's totally different from someone who is doing it so that they can cause division and have power and control to oppress people and exploit people and murder people and steal people's resources for their own benefit, their own self-glorification. And so that's, that's the difference. And so when you look at it particularly for, Af you know, for blacks, especially African Americans, we never were taught that. We never were taught that while we were enslaved. Mm -hmm. We weren't taught, we were taught other things. We were taught like, uh, turn the other cheek and you'll get there mm -hmm. by and by, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and don't resist. But I tell people a lot of times, when you read about turning the other cheek and enduring all things, um, in the Bible, it's talking about doing that for sacrifice. So you may endure all kinds of things and take on all kind of burdens for your children or your spouse or someone you love. But then on the other hand, the Bible says, resist the devil and he'll, fr and he'll flee from you. So when you see something wrong and disruptive, you're supposed to resist that. Mm. But are you willing to make sacrifices and to do a whole lot of things for the greater good? That's how we, how we should operate. Mm -hmm. One of the problems that we have in, in the church, the, uh, in, in terms of our theology, and theology, I believe, is best defined as human beings' view of God. Whoa, right? whoa, wait a second. Human beings' view Mm -hmm. That's not that's not very uh, I'm gonna say aggressive, but you view. Uh, I can just I watch TV. Uh, what, what yeah. that? When I say view of God, how do you how do you view God? And and in the Middle East, they have a saying that says there are as many paths to the throne of God as there are hearts and minds mm -hmm. of human beings. Mm -hmm. So how do I see God mm -hmm. is is important. So getting into Black liberation theology. At one time when we were enslaved and we didn't see any way out, there was no way that you were going to get money, that you could have a home, that you, you know, you just died and the theology said, you'll get yours in the by and by. Mm. Then, you know, during Reconstruction, the theology shifted somewhere. We started believing, well, you know what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I can start a business. You know, we had, we had black folks who went to Congress, who became mayors. And then when we got the pushback, mm. the rise of the Klan, the backlash, mm. the Jim Crow era came in, mm. then we, because, because of the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment, giving us some relief mm. through civil rights and legislation, our theology shifted once again to say mm. civil rights mm. is our way forward. Mm. And so we went into the We Shall Overcome era. Mm. Then we went into the Black Power era. And so where we are now is that our theology still incorporates all of those pieces. So it's not like one piece disappears. Our, th our theology for black people incorporates each one of those theological stances but what we have not done in the 21st century, in the late 20th century, mm -hmm. we have not evolved a different theological view of God and how we deal with each other that deals with things like climate change, environmental justice, and these other things that we are experiencing now, but we, not, we have not yet developed a theological perspective 
that allows us to empower ourselves and to deal with those things. Mm. Uh, one, uh, here I go again. <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, so at the conference, um, uh, a DJ from uh, 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 from Chicago, mm -hmm. they pointed this out to me. I didn't know this. But it seems like in 2016, the Holy See said, hey, guess what? Jesus ain't coming back. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? I mean, but, but, but I'm, 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 I'm not being, oh, yeah. I'm not being no, facetious, no, no. but I, that's what they told me. And I read it on the, I saw it on the internet. Mm -hmm. Even after that, the Pope said that, hey, you mm -hmm. know, no need waiting for Jesus ain't coming back. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Most Christians, whether they know about that particular thing that the Catholic Church said, um, they still say, well, I don't have to do anything because I'm waiting for the by and by. Jesus is going to come and make everything right. Is mm -hmm. that still, how does that fit into this whole scene? <clears throat> thing? So, excuse me. So I take it that when Pope Francis said that, he was trying to say to people, don't wait for Jesus to come back. Oh, okay. We don't know, because first of all, we have to realize, too, that time as we know it is also a construct. There's no such thing as time. Mm. It's a construct that we have created so that we can measure the few pitiful days of our life so that we can regulate what we do and so we can understand what goes on around us. You can have a plan. <laughs> yeah, so, so if on earth a day is 24 hours, the amount of time that it takes for the planet to revolve around on its axis. But we know Mercury and Venus revolve much quicker. Mm -hmm. Their days, as we define it, are less than 24 hours. Mm -hmm. when, when we look at Saturn and Jupiter, because they're larger planets, it takes them a lot longer to revolve, mm -hmm. and they're, what we call a day is much longer. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a year. We measure a year by how long it takes the Earth to circumnavigate around the sun. Mm -hmm. Well, it takes longer for Saturn, it takes longer for Jupiter, it takes less for Saturn. So, so what is time? You know, the Bible says that what, what, is, a, what is a day for us may be 10,000 years for God. Mm. So for us to sit down and look at these signs and stuff and say, oh, Jesus is coming back soon. What we actually mean with that is that the trend, the direction that the earth is, the earth and people on earth is taking, that it cannot continue on this course. Mm. And that believing that, that the Creator, God, Jesus, the universe has to balance things mm. and something will come to put an end to this. Mm. You know, willful destruction of the earth and lack of caring and love for other human beings. That we can, and we're seeing that with climate change now, we cannot continue in the direction that we're going because scientists have said. When we reach a certain point, this will be an existential problem, meaning that life on Earth will cease to exist as we know it. Mm -hmm. And that might mean that there won't be any more people. And that, that might mean that what, what the Bible says in Revelation 21, and I, John, beheld a new heaven and a new earth because the former had passed away, well, maybe we won't be breathing air. Mm. Maybe our day won't be the same. Maybe we won't have the same crops, the same type of water, any of this stuff, because all of it might have to, not might have to change, will change if we continue to pursue the, the course that we're taking now. Again, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, uh, you're welcome. Right